So tonight I'd like to introduce you to Steve Oliver, who is the co-founder and group chief executive of Music Magpie, which is the world's largest, the largest re-commerce business, which he started in 2007 from his Stockport garage. Um, and Steve graduated from Sheffield with a BSc in psychology. Um, so tonight Steve's going to be talking to us about building an e-commerce business from a Stockport garage to the bright lights of San Jose. So I'd like to pass over to you, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Grace. Um, that sounded very grand, didn't it? I hope I can uh, live up to that uh, uh, introduction. Um, thanks uh, very much for uh, inviting me to present to you and hello and um, uh, nice to meet you all. I can see uh, lots of faces in bedrooms and studies and kitchens and various rooms and as you can see uh, I'm in my home office or man cave uh, where I've spent most of the last uh, five or six months now as we've all adjusted to working from home. Uh, which uh, we've been doing very much. So um, I want it very much to be sort of a, a, a fluid and, and, and two-way and, and go whichever way you want to take it, really. But I've prepared a few slides to just to tell you a bit about the business, a bit about me, a bit about how the business has changed um, over the, um, uh, the near close to 13 years that we've been doing it now uh, since I started in the garage which does seem a long time ago um, and then also just to, just to tell you where I think the world is a bit now where I want to take the business in this new norm that we're all existing in um, and um, I'm very much sort of then just I guess my thoughts on you know how I think you can get from where you are now uh, when I left Sheffield University in 1992 um, uh, to, you know, uh, fulfil your careers and enjoy uh, what you are going to do and, and hopefully earn a few quid uh, along the way is generally the, uh, uh, what we all try and do. So um, I hope my um, slides work if I just do that. Does that work? Somebody give me a thumbs up. Grace, give me a thumbs up. Can you see a picture of a dodgy looking family on a slide? No, that's bad. I'm not yet. I can just I can see a black square at the minute, Steve. Can you? <laughs> bad. Yeah. Uh, let me stop presenting and try again. Uh See, unfortunately, so do I. I yes, I, now it's come through, Steve. Excellent. You can see <laughs> lovely family. Lovely. There's a dodgy-looking bloke in between four lovely ladies. <laughs> that's um, that's me and my family. So, um, uh, half my wife on the right hand side, and my uh, three lovely girls. Uh, M, who's on the left, is my eldest. Hannah, uh, who, despite being my football daughter, and you'll already probably the the observant of you have spotted that the Port Man City. She's got the red dress on, and she's supposed to be a City fan. Um, but I did forgive her for it. She's about to come to Sheffield as well. So uh, in um, October, uh, end of this month, she's coming uh, to do biomedical science in Sheffield. Uh, and then Rebecca is the next one. So they're the most important people in my life. And, and he's the next important person in my life. He's my hero in life. He's my dad. Uh, and he's, uh, as I say, he's my hero in life, and he helped me set up the business. I dragged him out of retirement to help me in the garage when I first set up. Uh, as I've already mentioned, Man City is very important in my life. I own that sign. That's the sign from outside Main Road, our old ground. You'll re you recognise this place. Um, that's where I spent most of my three or four years of um, Sheffield University life. I do need to ask you whether they call still call the Friday night in there the dick show. Is it still called that, or is it now just a Friday night out? Was it just us that called it that? But I did meet my wife in there uh, in 1992, in my last year of uni. So we've just had our silver wedding because we got married in 95. Um, and that place, and I was looking on Google Maps before, and I'm not sure whether it still exists. It's the old psychology building, which was on the corner of Northumberland Road near Goodwin. But I'm not sure the Department of Psychology is there anymore because I think it 
it's down further in town. I don't, so have we got any uh, psychological psychology grads on? Yeah, we um we we've moved yeah. to uh, Central Court down the road. Um, um, so it's a shame it's not it's not as close to the first year accommodation anymore. But we don't use it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was where I spent three years, or some of the years when uh, when I wasn't in the pub. But mentioned that one quietly. Uh, but I was very proud of my two two that I got from um, uh, Sheffield uh, Uni and had an absolute ball there. My best friend in 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 life is now a hospital consultant in Hallamshire and Northern General because I went to university with him and he's never come back. He loved it so much. So I've got a great deal of fondness uh, for Sheffield. I'm going to come back to talk about sort of stuff I learned there and how I've applied it. This is just a bit of an overview slide about the business. What I want to do is just give you an idea of what the business is. I don't know how many of you have heard of Music Magpie, who's used it, who's been a customer, who's seen the adverts. You may know us as just the cash for CDs, DVDs, and games. That's how we started the business. We just offered a, a website that offered cash for. I sometimes use the phrase lazy man's eBay. Um, so 80% of the UK population won't sell on eBay. It's too much hassle. It's too much effort. They haven't got the inclination all the time. So we call ourselves the lazy man's eBay. We provide the logistics. We provide uh, valuation. You put your stuff in a box. We'll come and collect it from you or you drop it off and you get paid the day it arrives with us in our warehouse. So having started with CDs, DVDs and games, we're now the UK's biggest mobile phone recycler. And I'll show you some of the transformation uh, that's happened in the business in the last five or six years in particular. Quite a lot of info on this slide. I won't go through it all. The middle section tells you that basically we're selling. So the stuff that we buy from a consumer in that lazy man's eBay, we refurbish it all, make it look like new. In the case of a mobile phone, we'll change the battery, we'll change the screen if needed. We'll make it look like new. A bit like buying a car from an approved dealer. It's all about trust. That word trust in Trustpilot is massively important to us. Um, we've Actually, we've just gone over 150,000 reviews. But people trust us, whether they're selling to us or then when we've refurbed it and checked it and done the 70-point quality check, whether we're reselling it. We scaled the business by reselling, certainly in all those early years, on Amazon and eBay. And a proud claim to fame for the business, and this is one of those surreal moments in life, when I found out two or three years ago, we are the world's largest seller. In the history of Amazon and eBay, nobody has done more transactions than little old music magpie out of my garage um, from a few years ago. So we have 10 million global feedbacks on both of those um, platforms, uh, although we now resell more than half our products, and I'll give you a bit more info on that, on our own Magpie store, which is now the other half of the website. So sell or shop with us. Um, we have got a US business doing exactly the same model. I'll tell you a bit about that. It's called Declutter, and I'll tell you why it's called that. Um, and it's a doing about $50 million run rate of our 150 million-ish sterling group turnover now. Uh, and as I've put there, we are making some EBITDA now. Uh, forgive me again, I don't know the mix of, of students that we've got on about counting and business, so, um, um, but EBITDA is the top level of profit measure that corporate finance always tries to use because it values your business at the highest uh, number. Some of the sound bites at the bottom, we've paid out over £400 million now um, to uh, consumers for what they've sold to us, both UK and US. Got nearly 6 million users. Um, and we've sold to over 200 countries. I will just draw you, as I come off this slide, um, that phrase at the bottom is massively important to us. We've just received the UK trademark for it. Smart for you, smart for the planet. I'm sure all you guys, as are you millennials or Gen, Gen Z? I think it's probably Gen Z. But I think the planet is more and more important to all of us, whether it's an old boy like me, or certainly a, 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 a younger consumer who is more aware um, of the damage that we're all doing to the planet and actually refurbished and reusing the minerals, in particular out of old mobile phones. There's some, uh, nobody knows the fact there's gold, there's silver, 
there's platinum in mobile phones. Equally, there's lead, there's platinum, and there's even arsenic in mobile phones. So recycling them and giving them a second life rather than just chucking them in the ground is great for the planet. And we're, we're making sure that consumers know that buying or selling to us is smart for them and it's smart for the planet. I'll tell you a bit more about that. That was a picture of my house that it started in, and that converted garage on the left-hand side uh, is the very same converted garage. And literally, I went and bought some racks from Argos. I started buying some old CDs, put them on there. My co-founder did the technology bits of listing them, and we started off selling on Amazon and eBay. Um, that is a really, really dodgy picture that I had to find off Google. So we opened a shop. And that's me stood next to a fiberglass six foot high Elvis Presley uh, in doing a cheesy PR snap. But it worked, it got us recognized. And we just had one shop and then we ran the website from upstairs when we moved out of my garage. So this was in the first two or three years when turnover in the first year was half a million. The second year it was two and a half million. And then we moved to a big yellow storage unit and our turnover went to 11 million and then the year after to 34 million. So within four years, we've grown to 34 million. And we operated out of one of those big yellow storage buildings. Today, if we follow that turnover trajectory, we went 34 million, we went 60 million the year after, we went into the 70 millions. Um, and today, as you've seen, we're up at 150. Uh, we plateaued at around the 75, 80 for two or three years. And then as we moved into tech, we grew into the um, hundreds, um, so wrong way. Um, so that, we don't own all of that building, by the way. But if anybody ever goes through or calls at Stockport train station, uh, we operate from the first floor of there now. That is our head office uh, building. So obviously we, we have a lot of warehouse space. We have 200,000 square feet of warehouse space, um, but that is our office building right next to Stockport train station. So if you're ever going through Stockport train station and you fancy a brew, drop me an email, see me from free, and I'll be very happy to host you as long as I'm working there and not sat at home as I am at the moment. And that's the inside. And anybody who knows Manchester cultural references will spot on the right hand side of that. We remembered my Manchester roots and the business's roots in music by having a Hacienda pillar, uh, yellow and black stripe. So that's a bit about the beginnings of the business. This is the transformation of the business. And I'll try and go, I, I will apologize now. I turn into a horse racing commentator when I get talking about the business because I'm so passionate about it. But we've got a lot to get through in a few slides because I really want to hear your questions. So I'm going to go quickly as I can through these. This is the transformation in the business that we've had in the last, what, seven years, the graph starts. So you can see the blue line is the value of basically CDs, DVDs, and games that we've traded in the business. And over the years, it's gone down slowly and slightly. And we've lost the spikes that happened in January. That was always Music Magpie Christmas when we bought most of our CDs and DVDs and games. But that's flattened out. The green line is the value of the electronics that we've bought in becoming the UK's biggest mobile phone recycler. So we've transformed ourselves to be a consumer tech business that does physical media as opposed to the other way around. As you can see, we buy up to nine million pounds worth of old iPhones a month now. Um, that was the record month in iPhone refresh. So many of you will be aware, and it might be slightly delayed this month because of COVID, but there is a new iPhone that's about to launch. What's the big thing about this year's new iPhone? It will have 5G on it. Apple have been behind the curve uh, that we are expecting that to create a big wave of interest of people changing their Apple iPhones for one that's 5G uh, compliant. So um, faster payments. So all, all customers are paid the day we receive their items. So we're consumer champion. Um, in this recession, uh, I'm afraid that we're about to go into, we, we've, we've long since called ourselves sort of recession friendly. When I first set the business up in 07, 08, Martin Lewis, who does the moneysavingexpert.com, email uh, gave us a lot of coverage and talked about it was a smart way for consumers to raise cash or save money and that's very much the mantra for today a lot of businesses call themselves recession resistant we go one step further we're actually recession friendly 
because when distressed consumers are looking to raise money or save money buying branded products, Music Magpie is a great place for them to come. And just a little note there for the US, we do operate the same business model. Uh, and again, tech is up to three and a half million dollars. And they, believe me, are fairly fraught days sometimes when you can see yourself buying um, anything between half a million and three quarters of a million pounds worth of product on a day that you know the day it arrives with you, you've got to pay for. Um, these are the sales that have followed through from what we've bought. That last one was what we've bought. This is what we've sold. Not everything that's sold to us arrives with us. Some people change their mind. And of course, occasionally, uh, we have to regrade. So if somebody sells us a phone, we offer £150. They might sell it to us in good condition. I promise you, we try our best to accept it in the condition they told us it was and pay them the £150. We want to give the consumer a good experience. But actually, if it arrives and it's got a crack on it, we might need to regrade it and come back to you and say, actually, really sorry, but we can only give you £100 for that phone. Some of them go back. These are the sales that we've earned. You can see the, the green bar has been the growth of our Magpie store um, it, in our sales mix, and that's grown. And uh, I think there's some more information on that. Um, group turnover, 150 million. I haven't mentioned that we um, employ about 750 people uh, these days. It was more a few years ago, actually. It was about 1,000 because we had 30-odd physical shops on high streets. Uh, I'm a born retailer. Uh, my dad, who I showed before, uh, owned a shop all his life, and he had me behind the counter when I was 10 years old. I love retail. I love shops. Um, but I'm very, very glad I don't own any now. We closed our 30 shops about three years ago, and I doubt whether we would be sat here now if we had them because they would have probably dragged us down is the very sad reality of life, and I'll tell you more about where I think the world is going. Um, consumer tech category is now about 65% of group sales with CDs, DVDs, and games, what I call physical media being the, the balance. And the US is about 30% of turnover. Margins have improved. You may have seen our TV advert. Put a hand up, please, if you've seen our advert in the last three or four months. Make, make me feel better. Actually, it's quite good news when you haven't seen the advert, because that means you might not know about our service yet, and you might be then uh, motivated to go and use it, maybe even after you've listened to me, but it's our future growth. If everybody had heard of us already, we would have nowhere to go. Um, other categories uh, away from mobile phone have also grown. So we do games, consoles, we do tablets, we do uh, laptops, um, et cetera. So we do all sorts of categories. Um, this is a fact, as I mentioned before, we're really proud of it. Um, we did this last year, actually. We're now at 11 million, but 10 million reasons to be proud. We have 10 million plus feedbacks on eBay with a world's biggest seller. The next biggest seller in the world on eBay has only got 6 million feedbacks. Um, and uh, we've done so with a score of 99.5%. We're pretty good at what we do. We're pretty obsessional about the customer. The customer that is always orientated at the very center of everything we do, whether we're buying from them or whether we're selling to them, or ideally both. They're at the center of everything we do. And as I mentioned, we're also the biggest seller in the world on Amazon. And a couple of nice quotes. I've spoke to Murray today. Uh, eBay are a great partner of ours. Um, we still sell a lot with them, even though we're selling on our store. And as I say, Trustpilot, um, we became the eighth ever business in the UK to get 100,000 reviews, and we're now over 150,000. And again, for somebody who sells and buys um, used mobile phone, where there's an element of subjectivity, we're pretty proud of the fact that we do 9.4 out of 10. And I'm sure all of you guys who've used Trustpilot know that 9.4 is pretty good, 4.7 uh, stars. So I guess this is um, the, um, uh, the, the, the growth of our store uh, in, in uh, our sales mix. I don't know whether a video will work, and I might flick through it, actually, in, in the name of time. Um, perhaps what we'll do is try and distribute the links to the adverts, but they basically go to YouTube and play the 30-second advert. So we've got one store one and one trade one. 
Um, uh, one or two of you said you'd seen them anyway. So we'll save that bit of time. This is the emergence of the Magpie store when we're selling things. So we bought them, we've refurbed them, we put them on our shelves, we turn the stock very quickly, but this is the growth of our sales channels. As you can see, uh, Amazon being the blue line, many years ago, Jan 14, it was dominated our sales, 80% of our sales were Amazon. That was good, it scaled the business for us, but actually it was a dangerous position for us. It was a vulnerability because if you ever speak to anybody on Amazon of who sells on Amazon, they, they'll tell you it's like heroin. It's a great hit and it does its purpose, but not that I've ever had heroin. I really must stress I've never had heroin. Uh, but um, everybody wants to get off it. Everybody hates it and nobody wants to stay on it. They all want to come off Amazon because you have to live on Amazon and you are vulnerable every single night to them turning your account off. It's the way of life. They love consumers, they hate sellers. It's a reality of life. Um, eBay grew for us is the red line, but the one really I was drawing your attention to is the green line, the Magpie store. And that, as you can see, is now bigger than all the other channels added together. And we're really proud of that. It now sells over 90% of all our mobile phones are sold directly on the Magpie store. So you can see from the green line, from January 16, when we launched the store, uh, it was zero to now being the biggest sales channel. A couple of just um, facts in there about the success of the store. Over 6% conversion, which is top of class. It's market leading um, and fueled by market leading brand trust. Um, and also, obviously, like any good website and any good retailer, when you buy a phone from us now, we'll want to sell you a case. We want to sell you a pair of headphones and an extra charger, mobile charger or whatever um, and it's the job of any good retailer to do that and we recently launched 10 p.m cutoff um, <clears throat> so we've all know what it's like to break our phone we all know we're naked without our phones you can't possibly live without it so actually to be able to order it up until 10 o'clock at night on next day delivery i talk about tech a lot because it's the sexy side of the business but also i don't forget about the media performance um, and it's media that's the cash cow in our business, CDs, DVDs, books in particular, in this COVID world. Hands up if you've started reading books again. That is definitely me and definitely on holiday uh, where I've just been. Um, and um, our book sales have trebled in the last six months. The sales of books, new books, are going up. So CDs and DVDs won't surprise anyone to know they're going down 20% every year, have done for years. The sales of books, new books are going up, and our book sales have more than trebled um, in COVID. So we're milking the margin from this sunset category. You'll probably all be aware, streaming, whether it be music or in particular visual, has really fragmented. It's a bit like the football. In the last few years, you know, you can't just have Sky, you've got to have Sky and BT and Amazon. Well, if you want to watch a good box set now, you can't just have Amazon. You have to have Netflix. You need to have Sky. Some stuff's now on BritBox if it's BBC and ITV. And actually, Disney have just taken all their content off all of them to put it on their own. So, or you can buy a three-quid DVD to watch a film. So there's definitely been a bit of a bounce back to, you know, you add up all those subscriptions, you probably will put 40 quid a month. You can buy a lot of cheap DVDs to watch films um, for that. Book sales particularly strong. The Kindle was going to finish the book market, wasn't it? A few years ago, nobody was ever going to buy a book ever again. But they have. They've come back to physical books. Um, Poundland. Well, I gave you a sneak preview then of a character. Um, uh, Poundland are our uh, wholesale media um, partner. Uh, and we sell 9 million CDs and DVDs. Guess what they sell them for? A pound. Um, and we sell them to them for about 50p. Um, so we don't make much money from them, but, you know, it shifts some volume. Um, the media category led to an unlikely uh, fame for me last year. And I hope the, I hope the audio is going to work on this. Um, so I'll try and keep the story really short. Last September, I get an email from number 10 Downing Street. And I'm like, this is a scam. Where do I hit the delete button? And then I looked at it and I thought, it isn't a scam. It's the chief business advisor of Boris Johnson. I still don't know where he got my email address from, 
Um, but he asked me to go down to 10 Downing Street, which I did. And I put a tie on for about the first time in 25 years. Um, however, the second time I went, I didn't put a tie on because I, I, he asked me to join a small business committee. Uh, and there I am sat next to his chief business advisor uh, and on the other side of me that you can't see is Andrea Ledson. So the night before I go down the second time, they phone me up and they say, we've got something to ask you, Steve. Would you mind chairing the meeting and presenting Music Magpie to Boris Johnson and telling him about some of the challenges you faced in growing Music Magpie? So as you can tell from me now, I've got a two-minute version of Music Magpie. I've got a 102-minute version of Music Magpie. I've got the 22-minute version, which I'm trying to give you. I gave him about the four-minute version. In that speech that I gave him, and you can see me looking reasonably uh, unimpressed by what he's saying, because what I don't want you to think for a minute is that I'm any sort of fan of this guy. Absolutely not. And I'm not going to talk about politics because I'll be here the rest of the night. Um, but um, I told him a story about the fact that we scaled the business and we were the biggest seller on Amazon and eBay. And in that time, we had um, sold a Jason Donovan CD to North Korea. And we have actually sold a Jason Donovan CD to North Korea. We have also sold a Queer as Folk box set to the Vatican City. But I chose not to go with that one. And I was pretty pleased that I chose not to go with that one. Because two weeks after I told him this story, and to be fair, he wrote it down, he then appeared at his main conference in Manchester. And yes, can you hear that? Give me a free trade deals. Uh, we already have some astonishing exports, as I never tire of telling you. Uh, just in the actually in the last few months, I've 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 seen an Isle of Wight shipbuilder that exports vast aluminium leisure catamarans to Mexico. We export Jason Donovan CDs to North Korea. Would you believe it? Uh, <laughs> And, and we exported Nigel Farage briefly to America, though he seems to have, to have come back. Uh, Even his dad thought it was funny. So my, my dad nearly fell off his chair watching his speech at the conference and then texted me saying, Stephen, did you know the Jason Donovan CD story to uh, North Korea? Did you tell Boris Johnson about it? And I said, yeah. He said, he's just told it. So we had some fun on uh, social media and um, maybe one or two of you don't even know who Jason Donovan is. He was... Uh, a pop star when uh, I was probably more like your age um, and he sang a song called Especially For You which we did especially for Kim uh, etc so we actually think they they just he just blares it over the border at the South Koreans like they do with Asbos at bus stops um, but Twitter went into melt, uh, meltdown and it was a great claim to fame for the business um, whatever I do think about it politically and it's not positive um, it was an accolade and an honour for the business um, I'll talk about the US business quickly. That's the growth. Um, you can see from January 16, uh, where it's more like a, a million dollars a month, it's now over four million dollars a month. So it's quadrupled in those four years. Um, again, more than 50% of it now comes from tech, um, but it's really grown and scaled uh, over there. Great sales growth, now 60%. We, a bit like the Martin Lewis coverage early on, we got some great publicity, uh, Good Morning America, etc. Um, and we were called the best place to sell our your mobile phone. At the moment, we've got about 6% market share in the UK and only 1.4% in the US. If I had a one-line business plan, it may well be just have the same market share where we're doing a quarter of the activity that we're doing in the UK in a market four times as big and we'll have a very successful business. I have to tell you another very, very quick story. And I'll guarantee you it's the one thing you remember in about two years time when you think about some, some bloke who told you about Music Magpie. So when we were launching in, in America, guess what we called it? Music Magpie. Didn't give it a second thought. So we all know that is a magpie. On about the fifth week of operating our website, I went over to our site in Atlanta. We'd employed about 20 people. And our customer services, you are wondering what on earth that picture is, aren't you? Our customer services manager, who was called Vandetta. And the reason I put that picture up is um, she had the voice exactly of the maid in Tom and Jerry, Jerry. So she comes down the corridor and she says to me, Steve, what is a magpie? And I'll stop doing the accent there because I'm not very good at it. But basically, she had no idea what a magpie was. 
Um, and I said, you, you're worrying me now. Do you not know what a magpie is? She said, no, M-A-G-P-I-E, it's not even a word. So I said, right, well, come and look at, the, come and look at my laptop. And I opened the web, website and I pointed at the cartoon that's on here. And I said, what do you think that is? And she said, it's a penguin. And I said, no, it's not a penguin. Why would it be a penguin? It's a magpie. So that was me. And I very quickly, we had to rebrand the whole US site from an animal that nobody had ever heard of to declutter. Uh, so um, actually, it did us great favors. And we haven't looked back since. And there's a bonus point for anybody who can type in the comments what that lady's name is in Tom and Jerry. If you ever used to watch Tom and Jerry as a kid, I'll be very impressed if you know what she was called, the maid in Tom and Jerry. There's your quiz question. Um, so yeah, we haven't looked back since. I'm rattling through, I know I've got about three slides left. Being a magpie, this is at the heart of me, it's at the heart of the business, it's how we started, It what runs through the whole business now. We have a wonderful, wonderful lady on our reception called Lorraine. She is the heart of the business. She is a magpie. And I said to her one day, what do you think being a magpie means to you, Lorraine? Because we always talk about somebody joins the business and I'll go and ask Lorraine, is, are they a magpie? And she just said, yeah. And she's always right. She never misses it. Mammy two shoes. Jennifer, well done. You are right. Congratulations. Um, and Lorraine is always right about being a magpie, but we try to define it. What does being a magpie mean to you? What does it mean to me? We asked everybody in the business to give us three words that, that summed up what being a magpie was. The culture, the essence, the heart of the business. The top word, nearly 40% of people put family as the first word, which nearly made me cry. Um, because that was what I hoped and what I wanted. That is the business that I want to run. Those were the other words. We then did something clever with them. Well, I didn't. The graphic designer did. And put them into one of these word art things like that in the shape of a penguin. Sorry, a magpie. Um, but family, passionate, teamwork, challenging. These are the things that are important to me as a business. And any business you get involved in, I'm going to come on to this as my last slide. Please bear these words in mind. This is the kind of business I hope you would want to run one day and want to definitely want to work in. I won't dwell on this slide. It's loads of detail. These are the values of the business. What did we do with all those words? We said, right, we want to form what being a magpie means as values. And again, this is at the heart of the business. If you'd have asked me one value that I look for in anybody who works at Music Magpie, for me, with me, above me, my chairman, partners in the business. What's the one value that I look for in any business? It's magpies care. It's that word care. And that's what I look for in anybody I work with or for, etc. It's always the first and foremost thing. This is a very quick thing on the CSR aspects of the business. Last Christmas, we gave over a, um, a, a big part of our warehouse to the Mission Christmas campaign, and we facilitated over 40,000 Christmas presents uh, being distributed across Manchester uh, to underprivileged kids. We provided loads of volunteer days. It was something the whole business threw themselves behind, did loads of stuff. When the business has started to prosper and succeed, this is, again, something really, really important to me. We want to give back. I know it's a bit cliched, but we want to do do right, do right for the planet, do right for people, because magpies care about the environment. We care about our customers, colleagues, people generally. So if we can give back. Some of you may have seen um, a scheme that we did, NHS Charities Together. So when COVID started, um, we did a, um, a scheme where for every phone that we bought or any tech item we bought, we, we donated a pound. For anyone that we sold, we donated a pound. And again, I think I mentioned him earlier, actually. He's still in Sheffield. My best friend in life is a hospital consultant. I knew what he was going through every day. I lived and breathed it with him. He went from no COVID patients to 300 in less than three weeks. And the NHS, I don't need to tell anybody on this call, 
are the heroes, were the heroes, are the heroes. So we felt it really important to do this. Again, I won't, it's a 30 second graphic. I'll, you'll get the hang of it. So we were really, really proud. It meant so much to the business. We were all delighted, thank you, um, to raise that money. The top up we did, we, when we did the counting up at the end, it was 181,000, we wanted to round it up. It was a brilliant thing for us to do. We've done loads of other stuff. As you can imagine, what COVID's meant for our businesses, people have wanted to work from home, stay connected from home. Tablets have been more phones for elderly people to stay connected, people in hospitals, people in care homes. We've donated hundreds and hundreds and hundreds into Stepping Hill Hospital in Stockport down the road, but also care home environments and, and other vulnerable um, kids, etc. cetera. Um, it's all been really, really important to us. What's next for Music Magpie? I've mentioned before, COVID, uh, so, I'm not saying anything controversial here, um, but, what it's done is the online percentage of retail has accelerated. So if you look at the graph of percentage of retail spend online, it was doing that and it had grown to about 25%. The last three months, it's gone like that. It's just vertical line. It's, it's grown about five years worth of growth in three months. This is a permanent structural change to the way we all work, the way we rest and the way we, way we play and consume products. It's absolutely greater emphasis on digital technology. The businesses that have prospered during COVID, logistics, digital, online. Uh, my, my friend who's the MD of Hermes, who get bad press sometimes for throwing parcels over fences, um, has doubled his volume in the last six months. Doubled his volume that's going through his network. It's absurd. So all these desperately poor businesses, uh, sorry, I feel sorry for them that they weren't poor businesses. Um, poor as in we all feel sorry for them, on, on, uh, on the high street businesses who've suffered because the world has moved even more online. What's next? Sustainability, even more important to us. This phrase, smart for you, smart for the planet. Revised ways of selling to us. Um, even easier, simpler and more environmentally friendly. I haven't got time to go into it now. We are launching basically a mobile phone buying kiosk that you can walk up with your old phone in Asda or Co-op and sell your old phone to us and get instant cash in store. I mentioned Lazy Man's eBay before. It's even lazier, a uh, man's eBay. Um, also, there'll be a new way of consumers acquiring a phone from us to service the sadly increasingly distressed economic environment we're about to operate in. Um, this won't be uh, huge APRs. It won't be Wonga. It won't even be Klarna that we already offer on store. This will be a way, basically, I will tell you, I didn't want to put it in writing because we, we won't be launching it for a few weeks yet, but we're going to offer for the first time people the ability to rent a phone. So they can buy an iPhone 7 from us for about 165 quid, I think they are at the moment, or they can rent one for 10 quid a month. And for that, you get 20 quid worth of free accessories, free next day delivery, and free repairs if you break it or accidentally damage it. 10 pounds a month. Will, will service not just distressed economic, but hopefully some of you might go, yeah, that sounds a good deal. And you'll crack the code, the networks call it crack the code. You'll buy a handset or you'll rent a handset and then you'll buy an airtime package rather than just pay 50 quid a month to one of the networks um, for it. Uh, and we've also launched a, a corporate recycling partnership um, to service businesses who want to sell in bulk to us. I'm way over time, so I'm gonna wrap up. Um, this is our new branding. If you went on our website before you listened to me or during, you'll have seen, um, it's no coincidence, it was sky blue in our logo. That was because of my football. That's how sad I am. Uh, this is our new um, logo that we'll be launching in the next quarter. It's very earthy, planet, blue of the sea, green of the land, put leaves. Um, this is smart for the planet. This is our future branding. Um, that was straight off the options that was given by the graphic designer. My top tips, this is finishing, and I'm not I'm not telling you anything um, you don't know here. 
These are really cliched, and I'm really sorry for them, but they're absolutely what I believe in. You can probably hear after 13 years, I've never been more passionate about Music Magpie. I jump out of bed every day. I love every day. I love my colleagues. I love the business. I love what we're doing. There's been some really tough days, but I love it, and I love the business. Be passionate about if you do everything you do. And if you're not passionate and you don't believe in it, don't do it. Don't bother. Stop what you're doing and find something else to do. Be prepared to work hard. There is no substitute. You know that from the studies. Even I knew that. I was a bit of a layabout at uni, but I got my 2-2 two -two by working hard when I needed to. Be prepared to work hard. I work morning, noon, and night. At the start of Music Magpie, I had to go and get another job to earn salary to put food on the family table. So I was MD of a fragrance retailer called The Fragrance Shop for 18 months. I did that during the day, and I did Music Magpie at night. I answered customer service emails at 2 o'clock in the morning and negotiated Royal Mail contracts by email at 3 o'clock in the morning. My little girls were very worried about me. But you have to, when, at the vital moments, when needed, now I'm very much careful about getting the work-life balance right, but when needed, work hard. The devil is always in the detail. I love, love, love my numbers. Nobody ever gets a number past me, a wrong number. Get into your numbers, understand them, and nobody will ever pull the wool over your eyes. The devil is always in them. And this is the first thing that my old man ever told me. He said, actually, academic qualifications are important, and they're important to me, and they'll be important to you. But the most important quality in life is common sense and logic. And I've put that in brackets because it was a phrase I heard more and more recently. We had a piece of work done by us by a consultancy and we paid a lot of money for it and they presented the outcome to me and I said, I'm really, really sorry because I promise you I'm not a rude person, but I said, that's garbage. And what they hadn't done is apply the CEO sniff test because they proposed to do something for us and then come up with an outcome. It didn't make any sense whatsoever. It applied no common sense and logic and I can't go into the details of it it just didn't. Always, always, always use your numbers and then apply common sense and logic. And this is the first and foremost thing that I hope you picked up when I talked about the values. I talked about the family. Those three words are fundamental to everything I do with the business, with my colleagues, with my friends at Magpie. Respect, trust and value them. If you respect your colleagues, trust them and value them. And that's not just paying them well, although it's obviously important but it's just making them feel valued, make them feel impassioned about what they're doing and believe in it and understand where you're going. We did a company comms session this afternoon. I talked to all 150 head office based people and I told them exactly where we're going as a business and what I want to do. Respect, trust and value them. And communication is paramount. Whether I'm talking to the cleaner or the bank manager or my chairman or my board colleague or the office junior, I'll go and talk to them, usually about football, actually, um, or sport, or a box set. Um, but I'll always find something. And communication is key. Talk to them, understand them, make them realise you're a normal human being and make them feel part of what they're doing. And that is at the key of everything. And that is me, and I'm sorry I've overran. But thank you for listening. Thank you. Can I have thank you. Thank you. That was... <laughs> I think everyone's giving you a little round of applause with their mics off. <laughs> Thank you. Um, that, was, that was fantastic and just so interesting to see how you adapt with the business and where it's going. So Thank you so much. Um, so we'll just fill the last 15 minutes with some questions that we um, have submitted prior to the session. And then we did get some through in the chat. So if we get time to go on to those, we will. Um, we have had some issues with about four or five of the students not being able to get in tonight. So it might be that I ask a question for someone that's not here, in which case we'll skip on to the next one. Um, so I've got a question from uh, Shahab Gorji Malabani. Um, are you here, Shahab? No? Okay, right. We'll go on to the next one. Um, we've got one from Stephanie Taviner. Is Stephanie here? It's going to be all the, all the people that haven't been able to get in. Isn't it? <laughs> no. Okay. Ewan, you're here. Ewan Berry. I can see you. 
Um, so you and you had a question about uh, new technology. Could you ask that for Steve, please? Yeah. Hi, Steve. Thanks for that. It was really interesting to hear how you've um, how the business has changed over time. Um, so I wanted to ask, as a technology business, obviously we see huge technological change all the time. Um, the first part of the question is, how do you stay ahead of the curve with regards to changes in technology? Um, and do you have any examples of in your business where technology has really changed how you do things? So I was thinking maybe how you inspect product as it comes in. Do you have do you use vision systems or any new sorts of technology like that? Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, it's the one area of the business. Well, actually, there's more than one, but it's the primary area of the business that I can't ever profound to be an expert in. Actually, I'm going to stop sharing the screen. And maybe see you bigger. Yeah, um, I can't pretend to be an IT expert. I The smartest answer I can give to the first bit is employ really, really smart people uh, who are <laughs> leading edge. We've just taken on at the back end of last year, the digital transformation uh, director for Thomas Cook, uh, who had a workforce of 1300 people working for him. Uh, now, and it was a bit of a shock because he went to being about 40. Um, but he is incredibly smart. He is very leading edge in everything he does. We are very innovative. I think, you know, we definitely uh, constantly strive to sophisticate and develop our technology. Uh, now, you're absolutely right, actually, in terms of we're, we're mid negotiation at the moment with a company where you will literally put your phone in one end. And all the manual stuff that we're doing at the moment with batteries and screens and whatever else, it will it will spit a phone out at the other end that for all intents and purposes is grade A plus. It just looks uh, you know brand new. Obviously we won't sell it as that, but uh, it's that innovative in its in its um, uh, procedures. It's an incredible machine. I've seen, I've seen I've witnessed it myself now. Um, I mean, if I think back years and years ago, <clears throat> when we first were buying CDs and DVDs and games, you had to go onto the website. You could still do this if you really want, but it's hard work. You have to get your CD, you have to get your 13-digit barcode and start typing a 13-digit barcode into the site. And if you want to sell 100 items to us, that's going to take you a couple of hours. So the biggest single thing we did in about year three is launch the app. And this camera on the back of the phone it turns into a barcode reader on the app and you just bip it. And now a lot of parents get the kids to go around the house, bip, 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 and it's like the supermarket scanner. And they're building a transaction to us. And it now you can sell those 100 items to us in five minutes, 10 minutes maximum. So there was, I talked about digital before being more and more important. That is the responsibility of digital. Something I often say is, as consumers, and I'm going to tag myself in this. I'm not trying to be offensive. We're all lazy and daft. You know, we'll all walk up to a door that says pull on it. And the first thing we'll do is push it because we're daft. We turn our brains off and consumers do. You go on a website. My, my eldest daughter is now doing uh, UX and Crow on the website. And she says it's, it's a lot of logic, but actually it's a lot of science. Because actually just moving a button from one place to the other adds 1% onto conversion because people just go, what do I do next? We've all been on websites where you go, I'm stuck. I don't know what you do. And that's a killer. That's that's so bad for any website. So it's just constantly looking to enhance the technology, really, and, and sophisticate and develop it. Good stuff. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, Ewan. Um, OK, so the next question is Liana, who is also here, I can see. Um, so, Liana, you asked a question about um what advice would steve have given himself i'm sorry i missed the last bit the advice on what steve would oh i think rihanna just needs to turn her microphone on there we go she's going to oh. ask it now and um, thank you for coming to talk to us yeah so my question is what advice would you have given to your younger self looking back from what you know now oh blimey right i'm gonna go right back to my university career um, Kath, my wife, knows this. I don't have many regrets in life at all. I've got one regret, and that was that I did psychology. 
Um, so actually, what I, because I didn't, I thought I was going to enjoy it, and I didn't. And at the end of first year, I was minoring in business and economics, and I really, really should have swapped over, because what I thought I wanted to be was an accountant. Um, so, and actually, what I did go and join from um, from university is I joined a, an accountancy practice just up the road in Brew Mill. Actually, I think it's still there, opposite the Brew Mill Tav called Horson's Chartered Accountants. And I did two years there doing accountancy. Um, but I should I should have swapped over. I didn't enjoy psychology. It didn't really interest me. Bits of it did. Uh, but I should have done business and finance. And again, it, it was that top line that I put on the slide, really. I've done a couple of things in life since where I thought, if I'm not enjoying it, if life's too short. You spend oh, a minimum of a third of your life, maybe half your life at work, You've got to enjoy what you're doing. If you don't, please stop and do something else. And I've had a couple of times where I've got myself in a position where I thought, I'm not enjoying it. I need to change and I need to do something that I feel passionate about and I believe in. And I know I'd already covered that. So, so that's not a great answer, is it? Um, the other thing I would say, if you ever, ever start a business and it's your idea, it's your baby, employ smarter people than you keep the brain you know be the heart of the business um but use your brain to go and in hire in people who will know more about i mentioned the cto before it's the best hire i think we've ever made because he will move us on leaps and bounds now take on smart people never be scared about hiring somebody smarter than you it's not hard in my case um but it's the you know it's the best thing you can do is invest in people Thank you. Uh, Liana, because I also I can um, forgive me, Grace, because I'm gonna I'm gonna um, go to the the bar on the side actually about you can't be a million pound company without exploiting a labour force or negatively impacting the planet. And I talk about caring about people and caring about the planet because I mean it. I'm not being a fraud when it comes to that. Um, so I do believe you can be a million pound company, but I do believe you can look after people. We signed up to the Good Employment Charter. I would love to pay everybody, not just the minimum wage, but the living wage. We can't quite do it at the moment because we've got quite a lot of um, lower paid. But we do make sure we pay them at least the minimum wage, if not a bit more. Um, but yes, I don't think you need to exploit your labour force. Exactly the opposite. Value them, don't exploit them. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. That was really interesting. And, and yeah, it's interesting to hear about different businesses and how they go about things. Um, so I think we've got about three or four minutes left. So we'll just have one more question and we'll go with Lewis Green, who I can also see is here. So Lewis, you asked um, a little bit about how uh, marketing strategies. So do you want to ask that question? Uh, yeah, my question was about obviously with consumers becoming more aware of how companies and brands affect them, do you think your marketing strategies over time will change in the future? I think it's really in mid transition actually, uh, where you know, with this phrase that we've got of smart for you, smart for the planet, we're trying to position ourselves as you know, I guess when I was when I was a bit younger, saving money was always seen as a bit grubby. You know, you, you wouldn't be seen in Poundland. What, oh, oh, they shop in Poundland. Well, now, actually, saving money, is, it being savvy about saving money, is something to be proud of. You'll, Insta you'll, 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 you'll put it on Instagram, you'll, you'll, you'll tell your mate, you know, my, my dear niece, who's my fourth daughter, has a purse full of vouchers. You know, she's got vouchers, but they're 50 P's or a quid or whatever. And I'm like... No, she doesn't need that 50p or a pound, but it's smart to save money. So get finding great value is, is smart and saving the planet is smart. And I think, as I said, we're trying to, I think it's very genuine again. We're not playing with this message. I'm not trying to be um, fraudulent in any way with the message. It's a genuinely felt. We believe our business is, is both smart for you and the planet. So please come and use us. Make up your own mind about whether you trust us, whether you believe us. We hope you do. You know, come and see that the money that we've raised for the NHS charities, etc. Um, but yeah, I do think 
you know, the fast fashion brigade have been pulling, excuse the pun, been pulling the wool over everybody's eyes for too long and they've got away with it. And um, I think there'll be a big backlash against them. I wouldn't own boo-boo shares now. Yeah, absolutely. And I think also as well, you know, I think it kind of goes back to co um, corporate social responsibility. Um, I think those brands and those companies that aren't being responsible and aren't looking after the planet and thinking of sustainability will ultimately fail in the end. So I think it's a very smart move as well, a very honest move from you guys too. I hope so, Lewis. Thanks for that, because it, it is something we believe passionately, and I do, and the business does. And it's really, really important to us. Brilliant. Thanks, Lewis. Um, so I think we'll wrap up with the questions now, just because we're, we're coming towards the end. Um, so I think it would be just good if we could all give Steve a big round of applause with my phone off.